All right, thanks for staying with us now. Extracting from a publication on Premium Times, questions around leadership, the provenance of those able to aspire to attain and exercise it have captured some of the most vexing and disturbing concerns in Nigeria today, as it is as it did rather in recent decades. While the steady progression of time is no doubt about to ease out um, a generation that has um, clung tightly rather to political power since the dawn of independence from the British colonial rule in 1960 and occasioned various manifestations of um, dis destructions uh, culminating in a civil war and breakout circles of authoritarian rule, there is no greater evidence that the playbook of political power and participation can no longer remain the same. If anything, um, it is clear that the youth of Nigeria are intent on no longer being bystanders in the fair of the governance of Nigeria and how their country is being run, um, particularly within the purview of the sustained um, failing of an older citizenry or power elite. It is clear that youth no longer want to be leaders of tomorrow, but those of today. And today we are asking, how can this mobilization that is happening right now amongst the Nigerian youth, how can it impact the future of Nigeria? That's the question. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. So, Elsa, I just wanted to hear your two cents on this. Um... I mean, I don't know if you saw the movements, the Peter Obi movements that happened over the weekend. A lot of youth, I mean, these people were unpaid. I heard that people were making contributions, you know, getting, you know, because the government told them when they wanted to move, no gathering in one point. So they had to keep, it's a procession, they had to keep walking. Mm -hmm. And for every, like, four cars, they hired DJs that would keep playing music and all of that. So in between four cars, you see a DJ like that. I saw a truck that had um, a bean truck that was going with them. So as you're drinking the water, mm -hmm. they are picking up, they are picking up the dress after you. So I mean, so it was organized. so coordinated and organized. This is the first time you will see a really structured mobilization amongst mm -hmm. the young people, especially now creating political awareness for people, you know, and as you're going, they are greeting you, hailing you that, ah, okay, oh, this is our candidate, this is the person we're supporting. But do you think this would actually impact the, the future of Nigeria? Then I'll bring in our guest. Hmm, I like that you said the future of Nigeria, so I'll say yes. Okay. Um, I know a lot of us are still very skeptical as to the impact of this movement mm. um, when it comes to 2023 general election. But I like where we are now. It's a good time to be alive. It's a good time to be part of um, that generation that is standing up and doing something, right? Whether you, I mean, I, I, sometimes I don't engage people when they begin to sort of antagonize. Um, so because there's a difference between antagonizing and just being critic, critical, mm. right? And just trying to point out things. But you can't really just sit back and keep saying, oh, these people are this, these people are that, they've not done this, they've not done that, who do they think they are, where are they coming from, they don't understand politics, mm. right? And just sit back. But you know that there needs to be a change. So you that, are, that have made it your job to antagonize this movement, what do you prefer to be the best solution for this change, right? So I like that these things are happening. Yes, it will impact the future of Nigeria. Um, again, it, it to also make more impact when we begin to see the various reforms that will come to our electoral process and also INEC, mm. right? Um, imagine when we get to the point where, quote and unquote, there can be like a diaspora voting. Trust me, a lot of people will definitely sit, sit mm -hmm. up. Um, when we get to the point where we know that our votes can really count and our voice can be heard. And back to us as a people as well, when we also take this movement away from just the presidency, and begin to spread them among across, even local across governments local governments, governments. Just be interested. Yeah. Um, I don't want a situation which we've always had, we might still have, where it's just the presidency that we are concerned about and then the governorship. Um, those other areas as well, we need to begin to ask questions. Who are people there? What are their track record? What What is the blueprint? What do they want to come in to do their manifesto and things like that? So yes, I believe that everything happening now uh, it is. It is start now. I think this whole thing started from the fact that we had a President Muhammad Buhari as a president, mm. right? Um, the things he has done, which led to answers, mm -hmm. and now we are here, right? So it's not going to end here. 
Um, I, I just want to believe that we'll also not lose hope because it's not a, it's not going to be a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. It's not just going to change everything at once, but we need to start somewhere, and I'm glad that we've started from where we are right now. Absolutely. Yeah. So let me bring in our guest, Dr. Moise Adeyemi Banure, SAN, PhD. He is a lawyer and activist. He formed the United Action for Change, which serves as a pressure group and think um, tank, which... Uh, with the drive to build a society where people are valued and treated equally, um, enjoy their rights as full citizens. And, I mean, anybody that knows him is a friend of the house and always advocating for better governance in Nigeria, especially with reforms in the legislative arm of government. And he's joined us live. Thank you so much. Via Zoom. <laughs> All right, so Dr. Vanira, I mean, thank you again. It's always a pleasure when we have you on the show to have these kinds of conversation, right? Um, quickly, before we go into this main conversation, I just wanted to ask a quick question. The ruling that has happened in Oshun State where they say that Oitola was not even qualified to be a candidate in the first place, is this in a bid to upturn the elections or what exactly is the reason for this? So the election at the end, it has nothing to do with the election proper. Okay. Um, it, to a certain extent, it's like a pre-election case. Uh, it's, one, it's a case challenging the nomination of Oyetola as candidate of our progressive Congress. And what the court have said there is that because the person that signed the nomination for it was not the right person to have signed it, as such, he was not a candidate for the purpose of that election. That was the decision of the court. Hmm. So does this in any way say that he's going to, probably is a plot to get the person that won the elections, or what exactly is the goal for It won't affect anything, no. right? Well, you know, it is, it, it, it's somebody else that has won the election so far. It's the PDP candidate that won the election. Hmm. He is challenging the victory of the PDP candidate. So the only nexus between that decision and the current case is simply on what we call as lawyers locus, the standing mm. to sue. That is, do you have a right to sue? Do you have a right to bring the petition because before the election tribunal? Okay. Mm. Okay. Let's talk so about let's this. let's talk about the conversation for today, mm -hmm. right? Youth mobilization, right? I mean, on Saturday, we saw a lot of young people going on the streets, you know. I mean, they've been, it's been happening for a while. But, but I think Saturday was like the highlight because, again, it was the first time it was coming to Lagos, right? Um, a lot of young people are woke. You know, that's the English. They are woke and a lot of young people are mm -hmm. very conscious. <laughs> they are very conscious politically right now. And there's a lot of massive engagement going on, different uh, small groups, big groups. You are somebody that has created... A pressure group so you understand what this kinds of movement can do in terms of impact in you know anything in the governance in everything in nigeria so i mean first of all what are your thoughts today as it stands that about the nigerian you do you think that we are really really there we have gotten to that point where we've had it and we are ready to take on um what's it called political positions and take on the the governance of our country well, honestly speaking, I'm very excited about the development. Very, very excited is uh, for me is uh, the byproduct of some of the effort that has been put in by a lot of people, groups, and associations in the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, for example, in my own movement, uh, the United Action for Change, we've always had a three-day leadership, youth leadership uh, training for our youth every year in order to encourage them and bring their leadership capacity. So, and again, recognizing the fact that about 60% of the electorate, those that are eligible to vote, to vote at our election are youth, it becomes exciting that they are beginning to appreciate the fact that the future, not even the future, today belongs to them because their future is gone. But there's no future for them as far as I'm concerned because this is their future now. Now that they are woken up, from their slumber and are doing something honestly i'm excited and i believe that we must all be excited 
uh, I'm optimistic, we call it. They might not, as uh, said or remarked by the last speaker, get to the final st destination with this particular attempt, but at least something major is happening now. There is a force that is going on all over the whole place. The only thing we need to do beyond that is to also get them to go beyond even the mobilization of their civil law into the enlightenment and education of the vulnerable. Mm. There are so many vulnerable people all over the whole place. Take, for example, the market women. The market women are often harassed into voting for a particular political party yeah. because of their vulnerability. And there are a lot of other people like that. Poor people, wretched people, they take advantage of the poverty. In fact, that is why I think personally I feel that it's more or less a, a deliberate policy on behalf um, uh, by our political leaders to continue to render our people wretched so that they will not be able to reason and do the right thing. So these vulnerable, they need to equally connect them now. Beyond mobilizing themselves, they need to connect them, educate them, defend them, so that they can exercise their free will independent of any pressure, harassment, or influence by the power that be. Hmm. I think you've given a bit of context to my question, but I'll still ask because I know you have more to say. Um, because you have worked in this area in terms of mobilizing youth and also supporting them for a better decision. Um, if you were, if, if I mean, if hypothetically speaking, we were to say, consult for us, right, and say, look at the movements now, what has been done and what can still be done. What would you say we are doing right and what would you say we need to do better to ensure that, I mean, like you said, even if it doesn't give us the, the desired result now, then we should ensure that we're on the right path at least. Yes, there is still a lot to be done that must confess to you. They are doing very well, undoubtedly. For example, election is becoming scientific now, whether we like it or not. We should start being able to project. They have one advantage, they are educated. They can start from the house to house interaction and engagement, conversation they've been having with a lot of people. I think they should be able to be getting or securing commitment gradually to the extent that you can say that in a particular polling unit, at the worst scenario, we can get a certain number of votes. I expect because of their level of education to be able to put that in place. And of course, they are doing very well in terms of defense, self-defense, because one of the things the older politicians usually use are the talks, the miscrant. But I can see that even on their own, maybe because of their, in quote, I'm using the word adversely, their own aggression too. The talks of the miscrant are beginning to be displaced equally from the political space. So again, for me, this is a good development equally. But like I said, what needs to be done is that they need to create more cells around the polling units all over the nation. These cells will be their theater room rather than the one that is holistic at the center. So if you are able to do this, in each of those cells, there are people that are capable, that are able to defend their vote for them. And again, like I said, they need to also build a formidable pressure group that will be able to protect the vulnerable. The vulnerable are the ones that the other politicians always take advantage of. Mm. They need to secure those people. They need to protect them. They need to educate them. They need to enlighten them. And in doing this, what they need to do basically is simple, is to help them connect their life to their vote. You see, mm. that's the missing link between these vulnerable and their vote. They don't know the importance. That is why yes. at times they sell their vote. They see it as a, a, a product. They merchandise it. And this is where the challenge is. But if you can show them that, look, what we are saying here is essentially that the hospital, the quality hospital that you take your children or yourself to when you are sick, quality education, employment, these are all the things that that vote, or that singular vote of yours encapsulate. Show them that one. Let them know that even if anybody is giving them money, if they give you any amount of money, they are equally cheating you because they ought to have given you more than that because mm. it is your money that they are recycling to you. Mm. So a lot of education, a lot of enlightenment needs to take place. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, I mean, imagine if you are able to paint a picture to that market woman that for the fact that your child cannot go to school, it is these votes that you are selling. That's why your child cannot get free education. I'm sure they would rethink it again to selling their votes. But while we're still on the subject of votes, right, um, INEC came out uh, a few weeks back, said that some registrations that were done, because again, part of the mobilization that I had seen that happened, you know, especially this season, is massive registration 
young people that never been registered before you know a lot of massive um, uh, registration went on you know there were too many people that went to go and get their voters cards and all of that in preparation for the elections come 2023 but again INEC brought out some reports that were really alarming there was one I said about 2 million people, uh, uh, fresh voters, about 1 million plus were disqualified. Some of that figures, you know, so the numbers are just going here and there. So now we know that for you to be legally admitted into any elections, you must have a PVC, right? So with the mobilization that is going on and these issues that we're having around INEC and all of that, how do we even navigate? Because if the system that is supposed to help us exercise that right that we have mobilized ourselves to exercise then has like a, a default how do we even begin to correct those kinds of anomalies well there are two ways to look at it the first one which again is an area that i'm currently with by the law that is the electoral act 2002 it is a criminal offense for example for somebody to engage in multiple or double registration hmm. but that has occurred they are fish it out what has happened to those culprits? Nothing. So that is an encouragement to further commit other electoral offenses. So that's an indictment in my very strong view against INEC itself. Second one aspect of it is the fact that this time around, if we are all able to get, uh, because a lot of PVC are still lying in the various INEC offices all over the nation. People need to go and get them. There is no doubt that you need them as a uh, access card to the uh, to the uh, election so again like i said earlier the youth need to identify all the people that have this uh pvcs they need to be able to engage them but beyond that one thing that is also very important now is or a good development that the older politicians seem to have forgotten is that it's no more business as usual because you cannot, so some of them that are amassing or purchasing or acquiring SSPVC all over the old place with the aim of using them to vote, of course, it won't work. Because now, beyond the power metric, there is the big fasting that technology that at the end of the day will be able to tell these are the eligible ones, these people are not eligible, mm -hmm. these votes are invalid. All these ones are still likely unknown. So, again, before I forget, as a rider, the youth need to educate themselves about the electoral, the import of it. There's so many novel provisions contained therein. They need to get experts to come and address them, to tell them what and what to look out for, what and what to do and what not to do. This is very important too, if at the end of the day, they want to accelerate their uh, achievement. Absolutely. All right, so let's quickly go on a very short break. When we come back from the break, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the impact of youth mobilization on Nigeria's future, right? And we have with us Dr. Moise Banere. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. I mean, that electoral act, I mean, <laughs> you know, a lot, I think a lot of people are more hopeful for this 2023 election based on the based on the signing of that that electoral yeah. act you know so into law because mm -hmm. now so many things the anomalies that would have happened before you can't just wake up and do anyhow there has to be a system has the challenges you know, right with, uh, yeah but go, but go mm -hmm. ahead elsie okay i just even want to take this whole conversation away from just 2023 because i, I like the theme of the conversation which is the which future is future right um we still have our guests. Oh, yes. Right? Okay, so in in everything that's happening now, I like that we both agree that um, this is more beyond 2023. What do you think this impact will be in terms of um, the way we see ourselves as Nigerians, um, our mindsets? I mean, also looking at the fact that we just celebrated the second um, anniversary, right? And a lot of us would rather die on the hill of trying to leave Nigeria than trying to look around for opportunities, right? I mean, this is not to play down on 
anybody struggle or the reason they want to leave. So what, what do you think this whole mobilization and uh, the possibility of the general election, whatever the outcome may be, would be on the mindset of young people? Well, like I said earlier, this is a very positive development for all. Uh, beyond the election, what it potent is that, uh, you know, during the inside, there is this, um, uh, how do I call it now, that uh, was adopted during that campaign. I forgot, but I'll come back to that. What it portends is that our people are becoming politically conscious, mm -hmm. which is very important. It's a very, very, you know, in the past, we used to be passive about everything. And uh, it was just my swat meat that sell it, that, that says that all it takes for a nation to decay is for the good people there to keep quiet. Mm. We kept quiet for too long. And it's that muteness that has brought us to where we are today. So for me now, since our youth have woken up now, I'm sure it's going to be a progressive development to the extent that they start asking questions. And the moment we start asking questions, then we are ready for growth. We are ready for development of the country. So all the original mindset that vote will not count are beginning to change. Equally, you know, in those days, nobody believed in the system. They don't bother yourself, don't waste their time, leave them alone. It's the political class that knows how they go about all these things. But now, the good news is that people are beginning to have interest and have that conviction that something positive can still come out of this system. And for me, like I said, the youth are the highest stakeholder in the Nigerian project. That's the reality of today. If you go to unemployment statistics, they are the ones suffering more. Look at us to strike now. Who are the people suffering more? The youth. Everything, they are the people. So for me, what is very, what is potent is that because of this development now, even politicians generally or political officers that will start being conscious of the way and manner in which they conduct their affairs. Nobody was challenging them. That was why over time we have developed this humility, particularly on the part of the political class. Nothing can happen because nobody asks questions. How much are you spending? How much did you do this one? How did you acquire this one? All those has not happened. It will soon get to a level that the youth will start asking, come, how did you spend our money? How did you acquire this? We want to know the source of your wealth. And all those issues, by the time those things are happening, positivism will come in. And once that comes in, even that will help eventually to stem, stem the tide of all this emigration from the country. So this is very, very important and it's a good development like i said personally i'm very very excited about the development and we need to continuously encourage the youth to take up their uh, rightful place because it is their time anybody beyond the age of 50 should cannot claim to have more stake or higher stake in nigeria project than somebody below and that is the reality of the situation hmm. okay i like to stay on the word mobilization Right. So, I mean, I know you are our father. We are the youths here, right? <laughs> so, I, I would like you to make um, comparison between the 1993, which I'll use the word agitation for, then Occupy or Jota Nigeria. or Nigeria, and what is happening now, right? Um, what would you say is the major difference and the better impact if for for now, if you can see a difference? Because... I'm still very hurt by Occupy Nigeria. I know one knows where I'm going to. Let's not even get into that part, right? <laughs> but it was an agitation that a lot of people were on the road. NLC was part of it. And now we are back to the point where we all know. I mean, then, maybe some of us knew, but now we all know that we need subsidies to go, right? So comparing 1993, Occupy Nigeria, and what is happening now, from your wealth of knowledge, what advice do you have? What would you say? Well, from my experience, they are all different. Uh, different. Let's start with the first one. 1933 was specific about June 12 annulment. So it was specific to a particular struggle. The, uh, the uh, Occupy Nigeria was uh, revolved around the petroleum pricing. Inside, initially revolved around the police brutality. But now, this is all a comparison. This is about good governance. It is much more organized. The people involved are much more educated. They are much more informed. And mm -hmm. for this set of people, they understand issues that those people before that we had in the past, much more than the people were. And like I said earlier, they are the highest stakeholder 
So they have more stake in this struggle. So as far as possible, they are going to ensure and uh, uh, ensure that their own struggle is an organized struggle. It's a struggle of issues. And that is the that is the marked difference between what that either to uh, happened in 1993 and also during the occupied Nigeria. So this is a total struggle for good governance in the country. Absolutely. So now this is, uh, we like to call it the 99th hour. The campaigns have just started. Mm -hmm. I like what you said. You, you said something. You said the old guys, the old players, they know that it's not business as usual. So it means mm -hmm. that for anything, the young people are getting something right and we are putting them on their toes, right? So, how do oh, we... <laughs> on their bicycles, we are putting them on their bicycles, right? So, how do we, how do we translate that into actual uh, results? Because you said something about going to different polling this units, collating. You know, so there's a lot that can happen. And with the new electoral act, like you rightly said, not many of us are educated enough to understand the advantages of the new electoral act and how it's going to impact the elections, right? So how do we how do we chart it in a way that um, so I like the way when I'm watching the U.S. elections, for instance, right? They can easily almost tell you that this region belongs to this. So you know where to really concentrate on in terms of mobilization. So you are having a targeted mobilization. If you say, okay, this is a success, we want to, um, what's it called, we want to um, record, right? So we know the areas where our weakest um, numbers will come from. How do we start to do that if we really want to um, be impactful in these elections? Well, it is doable, like I said, it's very doable. It's a matter, again, these people have the capacity. They are the people that the older guys will always use for this purpose. So they have the capacity. It comes with them naturally, effortlessly. Mm. They can do their own polling. By the time they control poll all over, they will know where they are weak, where they need to strengthen. But the most important thing, that is the gap between them and sources, is education, is mm. enlightenment. Mm. I can tell you, everybody is really for it. Everybody in the nature now. But people need to be educated. And that is where, again, they need to be brutal, as far as I'm concerned, using the word advisedly, to move in aggressively, to educate people. Particularly, like I said, they need to create self. You see, the center of gravity for the new election is around the polling units. So you must work around each polling unit. To the extent that you can say confidently, do a projection to say, in each polling unit, we are sure of no less than 150 votes from this place, conservatively. That is doable, but it's a lot of hard work and they have the energy. And interestingly enough now, they are even bringing resources together to actualize it. So it's a very, very interesting development. Okay, so, so okay, so let's, let's stay on, because um, I always say that I have a feeling that we are repeating history, right? Um, uh, mobilizing ourselves around one person. Do you think this youth mobilization is around the Peter Obi? Do you believe it's a Peter or B or it, it could have been anybody? It's just that people are just tired and they are ready to actually um, effect a change. Well, I'm of the view that it's not about, it's not around and it's not about Peter or B. It's just a situation where people have gotten to that, look, we need a change. We need alternative. And they seem to be saying that, look, we are tired of the older generation. We need a younger people. We need younger people to come and take charge of the affair. That is the message. Hmm. Okay, so I think uh, we'll try to reconnect back because do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. The, the question because you know people are feeling that somebody said to me that oh, it, it could have been anybody. Even the Peter Obi knows that this is not about him. Mm. That it is about the agitations that we're tired, right? Nigerians have gotten to that point where they feel like we have so much. How come we are where we are? You know, today I was on, I was driving on the road and, and I was listening in on a documentary a particular radio station did since independence till date, right? It was really, really sickening mm. to think the people that Nigerian, Nigeria had so much hope 
and we had so much prospect that you would think that all of these things that we're talking about should not even be something that were worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. I saw a video just now before I came on air, Dubai in 2027, seeing flying flying drones and uh, you know and all of that. That's the kind of movement. I mean, because Nigeria yes, has the capacity. Don't, don't be comparing Nigeria no, to but you see, not, Dubai not came to off. us how many years ago mm. to I support to help them build. I, I hear you, but I want to speak to what you were saying, whether it was just a Peter or B or we are just tired. So I think it's also different factors coming together. You know when they say the universe will just align and things happen, right? Um, Peter Obi had made himself available and he had he, he was speaking from even the end, even before the end sales period. He would always uh, talk, even this event that happens every 1st of Platform. October. He wasn't yeah. there this time, mm. but he was usually there, right? And he would give numbers, talk about what he did in Anambra State, mm. also talk about how what he did earned him a lot of enemies in the political space because everybody was all about what can we eat, not um, how the country is moving forward or how these resources Governance can be is used getting better, to better multiply, right? So a lot of people start connecting with him from that point. And even when the NSAS thing happened as well, he was picking up, he used his platform. So it was a case of, oh, yes, you're tired, right? But then you look around. So who is this person that, that can just of, fit in? Can fit in that is... It's, a, it's more semblance of hope. Probably just speaking a bit of our language mm. and making us understand it. Because we all know that we are running a wasteful government. Mm. We don't need anybody to, to come and that. tell us yeah. even the president is there, even everybody on the on the on the front runner right now can attest to this mm. but why is it so difficult for us to cut down these excesses actually when you claim that the country is broke you claim that there is no money you're borrowing as if you have one money to pay back you know everything doesn't just make sense and it is worrying based on what i said earlier i don't believe that these people don't know what they are doing i don't believe that they are clueless i don't believe that they don't understand how to move this country from point a to point mm -hmm. b i just don't understand why we have so much greed wickedness and corruption right mm. so we then saw someone who it's not just saying it. We saw him do it. We see him still do it. Like, you can move and not move with 20... Um, odd or whatever, and all of that, and, yeah. And, all and you are still alive. You're mm. not dead. Mm. Right? So it, it's just us seeing it's his, that... It, he is a symbol. Yeah. But I think, and, yeah. We, yeah, I think we have Dr. Barney right back, you know, <laughs> as we wrap up, let's take some comments. Oh, okay. Um, woke. He said, let me give you an example. Take, for instance, you are walking down the road and all of a sudden someone comes up behind and steals that... Uh, what belongs to you and run and you run after the person and fight the person to collect what is rightfully yours does that also make you a thief the nigerian government keeps stealing from us our rights our uh, right to express ourselves right to elect a leader of our choice right to uh, re elect with one another or reflect i think Even with one another because we have become strangers in our own land relate it means now right to religion that is serving who we want to serve spiritually based on convictions, not compulsion. And when we fight for our rights um, that they have stolen from us, the government makes it look as though we are the criminals. What an mm -hmm. irony. Um, take your comment and I'll come back to Dr. Muiz. She gets women of waste, take it or leave it. The youth have risen up to take their future into their own hands. The so-called leaders are, well, are all shivering, especially with the obedient movements going all over the country. We must take back our nation from these old wines and new bottles. We've never had it bad like this. That's um, Bobby Kennedy from Taraba. Thank you, Bobby Kennedy. So, Dr. Banyue, we are wrapping up the conversation because we're running out of time. But I just want to say that globally, right, the whole world is going through all the same things that we're going through. Why is this agitation so much? It's not like the challenges that we're facing, especially with the economy and all of that, which is part of the um, agitation. <coughs> it's not like it's unique to Nigeria. So what are the other factors? I mean, you've mentioned ASU, you mentioned a few things, healthcare and all of that. Why do you think that it is so, um, the, the political space is so heated up right now that people do not even want to hear anything APC or PDP? Or do we have Dr. Yeah. Okay, go, okay, go ahead. The truth of the matter is there is so much frustration in the land. Mm -hmm. Like uh, your colleague said, the reality is that everybody, look at the cost of governors. You will weep. You are saying you are broke, and we all know what is going on. Mm -hmm. Since the time of, I think, Jaradua or Jaraba, if not to pass or so, we have had multiple agencies doing the same thing. 
They came up with a committee report, uh, Steve Orosa report, who said they should face them and ration, uh, ration them out. Face them out so as to save substantial sum. Up to now, nothing has happened. Mm. Look at our, uh, is it a country where we are, do we really and truly need a bicameral legislature? Mm. Do we need a part, uh, I mean, uh, members of the exec cab uh, cabinet as well as legislators to be permanent members? Mm. Can they be part time officers? Yeah. With the kind of situation that we are. So the cost of governance is a major thing because right now the truth of the matter is that virtually all workers in Nigeria today, their take home pay cannot take them home. Hmm. That alone is a source of anger. Mm -hmm. So now you now go beyond that, you now see some people. The, the way and manner in which they contract itself in opulence, just simply because they occupy public offices. Now you start wondering what's going on. So the, this fact is becoming so obvious to everybody that we believe that something major, something radical must happen as a matter of urgency because if not, honestly speaking, my sense of it is that it tell people with the kind of financial situation Nigeria is, if it were to be a country by now, they should have declared it to be a bankrupt company. Yes. But it's just because it's a country that has potential. And for how long are we going to remain a country of potentials? Hmm. Just simply because we don't have the right uh, set of people in the right position. So the time is overdue for this to happen. And what is happening, like I said to you, is a signal to several other things that will happen in the nearest future, hmm. which hopefully uh, we, uh, we, we bring the country back to its rightful position. Otherwise, I fear that the next administration, if they are not careful, will signal the end of the country. Hmm, 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 hmm. Quickly, comment. Well, I'm not reading this comment. Are you I've, sure? I've told you people that you, you should <laughs> stop stressing. I want to hear Dr. Barry. He says, good evening, ladies. Hmm. The youth must engage themselves to monitor the prog progress of the elections and results. These hard, uh, hard old cargo politicians wanted to do anything to play foul. Jagaban's online video is an old one during his workout after a knee surgery about two years ago. Regards from Ade. Ade is in the UK, so how he can really you, tell how you. How do you know? <laughs> Ade can how tell you. Just but Dr. Place, Badire, why position? do we always have politicians <laughs> when it's time for elections? They come and do workout. They come and play football. They eat corn on the road. <laughs> so why do we always have this playing out all the time? It's the old trick. Old trick, but like I said to you, it can't work again. Mm. Yeah. It's still. It's now still news. So... The earlier, the better they face the reality that things have changed and they must change with it. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So, they if you had one final, if you had one final thing, yeah, they need to go and re strategize. If you had a final thing to say to the Nigerian youth watching the show today, you know, what would you, your counsel be? Just one final. Uh, I counsel. commend them, I commend them, and I will wish and advise them that more work to be done. Mm. They need to be resolved and continue in that direction. So, if they fail, like if their candidate, the choice candidate does not, um, what's it called, emerge as the presidential uh, president matter. elect. It doesn't so, matter. Yeah. They should continue. So how do they keep that tempo? How? Because that they is another continue. problem we always have. You see, the organization must be sourced. Oh, sugar, we lost it. <laughs> All right, so I think we've run out of time. <laughs> but hey. Um, Elsie Godwin. It is well. Ah, what are you willing for? Ah, it is well. <laughs> Nigeria is 62. They yes. say that a fool at 40 is a fool forever. Mm. We are 62. Somebody said, after writing the old nice, he said, Agbaya, well done. That is Nigeria, that is Agbaya. <laughs> right, I think we've come a long way. Yeah. I'm, I'm very hopeful. I, 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 I just, I mean, let me just leave it there. I'm hopeful because I, I know that we have what it takes, mm. like you said. We have so much so much we have so much from tourism to everything if we begin to break down the everything. mineral resources we have everything. that's that is untapped or the ones that are being stolen day and night out of the country in Absolutely. collaboration with you know them right so we have a lot we have the potential and we i just hope that we can begin to get it right Absolutely. even if the person that we think is supposed to be there don't get there right whoever gets it this whole movement should also be a wake up call for that for person to, to, to believe think that, yeah, and say, possible. I need to make a mark. Absolutely. I need to let people know that I didn't just roll the bicycle for rolling sake. I am going there to do something.
Thank you, S.C. Gordon. <laughs> Thank you, everyone <laughs> that watched. Now, before we go, do I show you follow us on Instagram? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Banire. Thank you so much. Now, you can interact with us further. <laughs> Drop a comment. Most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. One of the great liabilities of history is that all too many people fail to remain awake through great periods of social change. Now, every society has its pre uh, protectors of status quo and its fraternities of the indifferent who are notorious for sleeping through revolutions. So today, our very own survival depends on our ability to stay awake, to adjust to new ideas, to remain vigilant, and to face the challenge of change. This was from Dr. Martin Luther King, and it is very relevant in today's Nigeria. We'll see you guys live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.